Okay, good morning, Tuesday 21st of Jan. Hope you're doing well. And to get you up to speed with this morning, obviously as the headlines would suggest, um, quite a lot of uh, attention toward how the Asia Pacific markets have reacted overnight to um, more and more growing press coverage about a new virus that has been spreading in China. So before I get into the details of what exactly that is and uh, potential outlook then for the impact it could have going forward, let's just have a quick review of the charts. Uh, and you can see definitely a, an Asia-inspired reaction in markets. So at around 1 a.m. London time, you can see a distinct downturn in the U.S. index futures, T-notes going bid, gold the same. However, gold has reversed course and we're literally trading to the tick of where we were having reversed the entire move. Uh, equity markets similarly are also stabilizing. Currency markets have been unmoved uh, on the back of this news. So it's been the other asset classes in focus. Oil also unmoved and interestingly to see then just an update from where we were when we delivered the briefing yesterday. So that knee jerk gap up that we had as we had had anticipated uh, had no lasting implications in regards to uh, the kind of civil situation in Libya and then that disruption on the, the pay side for the security forces in uh, Iraq. Uh, so oil remains down close to its S2 already this morning um, as that kind of slight negative tailwind I guess to the overnight performance in Asia uh, but we're going to talk about that now in a bit more detail. Before I do just a reminder, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you don't already do so. Uh, obviously, myself and, my, uh, and the team will be delivering our briefings every morning and then we'll be covering live events uh, as well, namely the Fed at the end of the month. So don't miss out on that because um, you'll have the opportunity to talk to us live and ask questions as well. Uh, but going back into the news then, let's have a quick look at things. Flashback to SARS for Asian equity markets with new virus. So consumer-related stocks dropped about 2.5% in the overnight session uh, in the Hang Seng in Hong Kong over the outbreak could affect spending over the Lunar New Year. So you remember that Lunar New Year kicking off and that's kind of a complete shutdown. Uh, it's a really important kind of commerce period for China when people are not at work, they're out and about town and they're meeting family and going to restaurants and spending. And so there has been an immediate connection towards this virus outbreak could have and impede then the economic situation uh, in China. Now, let me just bring this up. I saw this as a, an infographic. You've probably seen it circulating by now. But China have confirmed 224 coronavirus cases so far, a fourth death now from the outbreak with the World Health Organization calling an emergency meeting amid the spread to more cities. Uh, so you can see here the uh, map, I know it's a bit small, the map of China, so obviously Beijing situated in the northeastern part of the country, uh, but the actual outbreak said to have been a seafood and animal market in Wuhan, China, uh, which is based in the eastern part of the country, uh, as you can see here in the top left. Now, what is this? Well, a lot of people are drawing comparisons, of course, to the SARS virus in 2003. A um, couple of stats, though, to go through with SARS, uh, for those who, who don't remember it uh, with that much detail. It affected 8,089 people worldwide and resulted in 774 deaths in 37 countries. Uh, mortality rate of less than 10%, though. Uh, but importantly, one of the things here, when I've been just reading about it on the way into work this morning, is that uh, for context, on the same period, seasonal regular flu in the US killed about 80,000 people in the same year, whereas SARS killed 774 people globally. So, yeah, looking at it in comparison terms, I think statistically speaking, you're way more likely to die of normal flu than you are to contract, or you were, to contract SARS. So, obviously, there's, you know, with these types of events, I do feel like, you know, if you, if you switch on Bloomberg TV this morning, you know, you would think you need to run to Tesco's, buy your baked beans, go home and batten down the hatches because the zombies are coming out and the virus is going to be floating around in the air trying to nip you 
uh, as you go about your business. But you know, th th this is just the way in my mind that the media cycle works. It's such a, it's such a, um, it really cuts to the human core of what humans, particularly the way our society is structured, what we fear, which is a mass epidemic outbreak that is uncontrollable because we can't see it, you can't fight it. And I think that's just such a strong narrative for the, for the news that it's getting pumped like nobody's business this morning. But uh, I do feel my initial reaction to this news is, yeah, I mean, obviously from a, from a China point of view, uh, geographically, that's the most sensitive area given how dense the, pop, uh, the, the population is. Uh, and also as well, just given the, uh, I guess the, the fact that in many areas, certain, um, I guess, rules and regulations might not have the best cleaner standards when it comes to things like seafood and animal markets, where essentially was said to be the center of the outbreak of this particular virus. Um, so there has been a bit of a read across in the Asian session. Um, so to give you an idea, some of the areas which have been getting hit, uh, cosmetics, shopping malls, restaurants. Uh, if you think back to the SARS virus, Cafe Pacific actually fell almost 30% at the time. Now, uh, I, you know, don't get me wrong, that's not happening quite yet. Uh, if anything, actually the airline stocks performing generally seasonally well going into the Lunar New Year period. But uh, obviously people, traders price in future expectations and you're looking at an economy that in China is stabilizing, but in the case of Hong Kong, which has seen quite a meaningful sell-off overnight, Hong Kong has already been under significant pressure because of this, uh, which is basically not the headline alone, but the situation that their economy has been impeded by the ongoing months and months and months of violent protesting that's been happening. Um, and so, Overnight, you've also had just to boot that Moody's have cut Hong Kong's credit rating, saying the government's slow and ineffective response to months of protests has prompted a reassessment of Chinese territory's institutional strengths and governance. Uh, and I believe this is the second downgrade that they've had uh, since the protests have been ongoing. So you know, it just kind of exacerbates, f adds another kind of log on the fire, if you like, of, of economic pressures. Uh, that can be facing Hong Kong at the moment, and hence you've had this this reaction. Uh, but you know, could it could it sell off more? Uh, in short, I think yes, potentially. Uh, remember, the U.S. are coming back to market after the Martin Luther King Jr. Day holiday yesterday, so volumes will return back to normality. However, do I see a long-lasting? This is the beginning of the, a new episode of a market correction based on this coronavirus. I'd say no. I think after, once the dust settles, uh, I think people, some degree of rationale will return. And certainly in the UK, the press will turn back to Meghan and Harry before you know it. And no one would be talking about this. It's kind of where I sit in my mind's eye at the moment. Um, to give you a bit of context, though, uh, this was an interesting graphic Bloomberg did run. Um, and this goes back to 2000. And this, this graphic is looking at 2003, 2004. And as you can see here, on the left-hand side of the axis, you've got Chinese, well, Ch I say Chinese, Hong Kong quarterly GDP. So zero would be here where I'm running my mouse at the moment. So this would be negative. And you can see this kind of orange rectangle. This was when the SARS outbreak period happened. And you can see there was a meaningful impact here. Uh, a lot of people obviously just locking down the hatches and not going out, not spending, not hip hitting the shopping malls. This has, does have implications, of course, for the lights of the performance of an economy. And so that did get priced in and have an impact. However, the market quickly came back strongly in the period thereafter. So the actual, again, the very sharp initial interpretation and but a consistent recovery seen thereafter. And I think psychologically, this is quite a reflection of how humans, as I said, tend to react to this type of news. Almost an over-exaggeration to the first piece of small information. Only then rationale sees a calm, restored return to, to normality. And I think this will be exactly the same, uh, is what I'm saying. Okay, moving off that, let's talk about a few other things, then I'll hand you over to Sam. 
Um, this was one thing that potentially could have been a bit of a risk for markets, but seemingly has gone in a more positive fashion. Uh, and that is Macron and Donald Trump have agreed to a truce in their dispute over digital taxes. Uh, that will mean neither France nor the US will impose punitive tariffs this year, according to a French diplomat. So, of course, all things can be subject to change. But if anything, I'd say this is a positive development. This, of course, coming ahead of Mr. Trump, who two things. One, uh, you'll remember in a briefing yesterday on the calendar that I was showing you of highlights, uh, the final filings have been submitted as his Senate trial is set to recommence on the impeachment of Donald Trump. Uh, so that starts today. Uh, you've had various different things come out yesterday. Basically, there's two impeachment charges, uh, obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. Trump has come out and his legal team. Uh, I can't remember the number. It says some crazy number where he's got basically an all-star squad to see off this attack that he's under at the moment. Uh, and obviously, we talked about this many times before, so I'm not going to go into it. Uh, the, the actual likelihood of a follow-through of this actually materialising where the Senate follows the House's lead and actually impeaches the President is absolutely minimal. So I'm not going to talk about it any more than that. The other thing, though, uh, is Davos. As you've probably seen if you're watching the financial news networks, that continues. It's going on all week. And Trump is down to speak. So 11.30 to 12 Central European time he is going to be speaking. So late morning London time, you're going to be looking out for a special address by Donald Trump, the US president. Uh, that does come on the back of, from a global perspective, you had the IMF. Uh, they issued their world global outlook yesterday to kind of kick off Davos. Uh, nothing market moving from this. So just wanted to give you the headline, really. They trimmed their global economic outlook, but toned down risk warnings given some of the recent de-escalation uh, with the phase one trade deal between the US uh, and China. Other thing that's happened overnight is the people, well, uh, not people, we're talking about the PBOC, talking about the Bank of Japan. Uh, they left interest rates unchanged. However, they did raise their growth forecasts uh, completely in line with expectations. Uh, they're raising their growth forecasts, of course, because of the $120 billion fiscal stimulus from the Japanese Prime Minister, but they're still remaining very passive in terms of just holding off uh, on any policy changes at the moment. So still, if anything, holding a dovish stance. So no real shock result there at all. Uh, and then from an earnings perspective, uh, things are picking up a little bit this week. It's actually next week when things really do um, step up a few gears and we start to get hundreds of companies reporting. Uh, but there is one aftermarket that I think will um, draw a bit of attention. That, of course, is Netflix. Uh, I was just trying to recall the numbers from memory, and you know, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. But I think Netflix over the last quarter, uh, comparative to uh, Disney's share price performance, has been a wild divergence. And what I mean by that is Disney have been absolutely smashing it at the moment. Netflix suffering on the back of, for the first time really ever, they're getting increasing competition, uh, not just from Disney, but from Apple and AT&T and so on and so forth. Uh, and so their share or their options are pricing in a potential uh, share price swing of close to 8% on the back of their numbers, which sounds pretty spectacular, but actually that's about average. Uh, given uh, these kind of social media type, when well, I say social media, I say fang names tend to be uh, particularly of a smaller nature like Netflix, highly susceptible given that their underlying financial metrics are very much based on forward looking multiples. And so uh, I'd be interested to see how they, they fare uh, when they release their results. Uh, from a calendar perspective, what have we got? Um, pretty quiet, actually. As I said earlier, you do have. Um, the U.S. returning to market and obviously be interested to see how they respond to this latest virus outbreak. But I think we've covered that uh, and I've given my view in that respect. Uh, but from the U.K., you've got the latest employment data. So the employment change, unemployment rate and average earnings. And then from Germany, you get the ZEW economic sentiment. Uh, and then you've got Trump speaking late morning from Davos as well. But from a U.S. session, it is particularly quiet. There's not actually a great deal going on. Uh, a Schatz auction, a longer-dated gilt auction for any fixed-income traders. Um, 
just so you are aware. Uh, but that's pretty much it from me. So I'm going to hand you over to Sam, and I'll wish you a good day ahead. Any comments, of course, or questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video on YouTube. I'll do my best to respond throughout the day. Thanks very much. Hi, guys. Good morning. Hope uh, everyone uh, is doing well. Like Ant said, yeah, the US back in uh, to the market uh, today. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get that first uh, cash open that, that comes through. And, and just having a look here at equities. They are currently on their lows. I think it's probably a bit of an overreaction, really, isn't it? But uh, anyway, some levels to, to keep an eye on for the S&P. Uh, we did not quite make the all-time high yesterday in very quiet trade. Uh, so let's just get a, a trend line on those last couple of highs as, as that at some point could well come in for what uh, you probably call a pretty important line in the sand to the upside should we at some point uh, push uh, up over the next uh, well session or, or coming days. 33.19 to the upside. To the downside, uh, a level that broke through late on Thursday evening. It hasn't quite, actually, yeah, it had been tested a couple of times. 30. 30809 strong resistance on Thursdays, decent push up uh, to then get up to uh, towards well, another sort of almost 30 points to the upside. And we have tested that one, two, three times. Uh, so that to the downside is a pretty good line in the sand as well. The S1, albeit from yesterday, because these pivots have rolled over uh, due to the bank holiday, has acted as a bit of resistance uh, following a, a little bounce that we had. But as well, that is the low that we had on Friday. So. 33, 16 and 19 strong resistance. Now let's call that a zone to the upside. And 33.08 uh, as uh, a strong support level uh, you'd want to keep an eye on. A break lower, you'd then be looking at these lower points that we had back on uh, Thursday afternoon, early afternoon, and then some of the highs around the round number, the 3300 uh, as next areas to consider. Just going to bring in a, a trend line that I think is, is worth having on. We have of course, with this move overnight, uh, broken through that in the early hours. You can see here on the 14th and then the 16th broke through yesterday, finding strong support uh, and that break now coming at 1 a.m. So if at any point we do get a nice recovery, just keep an, uh, a watch where that could be uh, with these trend lines coming back in. But those would be the levels I'd look to have on uh, to the downside, I think. You know, 3,300 is, is a good a target as any if that low breaks. And if this holds, well, uh, you know, those uh, resistance points look pretty good. And that's really the general theme across the board for the Dow and the NASDAQ as well, looking pretty similar. Euro yesterday had a, a bit of a, uh, an attempt at late into the session of, of trying to get back above some of these key support levels uh, going back to the beginning uh, of the year, but also... Uh, the middle part of December uh, and early December as well. You can see we, we broke through, but uh, on the open we closed back above. However, we are now back below this level. Uh, and if that is to remain, well, let's put this on that longer chart because having a look here, you can see this market has a bit of room to potentially go down. We didn't quite make that low the 6th, uh, but that December uh, or last day of November beginning of December low around 110.60 would be an obvious target if this is to, to materialise. And I think that's what I would favour despite the, the small gap higher we had uh, this morning. Levels above where we're trading, uh, I would have 111.44 on the futures marked up. It's yesterday's slash today's pivot, the low of the 14th and then the low that we had on that breakdown on Friday as well as a, uh, as a pretty strong and important area. So. Uh, albeit where we're trading now, uh, as long as we stay below there, you'd favour a move lower. If we come back above it, obviously we've got those highs from today and yesterday, but also that 111.44, 45 point that I'd be, be looking to, to have marked up. The pound, <coughs> let's bring this in, just drifted higher really from yesterday morning. I, mean, I know we got the, the data out today, let's have a quick flick back to, to that calendar there. You can see you know, if you're in a pound position, uh, obviously, make sure you're out by uh, nine, you know, twenty-five, five minutes before at least. Uh, retail sales, the last reading that came out, uh, out out of the UK on Friday, we saw a decent move lower. So it's interesting to see maybe that data is just having a bit of a impact on this market. However, wouldn't expect 
uh, this one to really move things. However, the pound, let's have a look at some of the, the levels of interest. A break lower on Friday, much coupled with a, a stronger dollar as well, but the pound was weak from that retail sales. Uh, the high that we made this morning, just a bit above there, let's call it 130.50 to make it more round. You can have that as a zone along with yesterday, uh, today's high. You can see here some nice lows from the 15th, the 16th, and then the afternoon on the same day in the morning, midday on the 17th as a strong support before that breakthrough. That's your line in the sand for today that I'd have marked up above there. Fine, we can get a bit of a relief rally and, and target some of these higher levels around 130.85, nice breakdown area there. If that is to hold and we do drift lower, uh, well, look how important this area is that we touched yesterday. It's also the low that you had on the 13th and the 5th, uh, and the 14th, I should say. A strong, strong level of support. And as we know, why did we find that support again yesterday? Well, it's just remove everything, bring in that uh, trend line on the daily chart here. Doesn't get much more important uh, than that whole area. Break below there, the floodgates could open very quickly uh, from a technical point of view. I think you get 23rd of December uh, level almost in a candle, and then you'd be targeting as well these points around here which you can see marked up around the 128s low of the November 11th and 25th uh, that's what I'm favoring on a break of that uh, have to wait and see uh, how that materializes obviously on the daily chart looking here for an actual close for that extra confirmation uh, as well quick look over to, to gold this morning and oil just to, to wrap it you can see a full reversal uh, of that spike higher we're back to where we were trading um, in the early hours of it was yesterday really that's push through coming in the early hours this morning one o'clock reversal fine uh, the trend line here starting on the 14th is key we're coming to test that now uh, let's just get this on and you can see the significance I mean what a trend line I mean that is that's chart um, perfection on that trend here getting a break of that it's also got the low of the of yesterday uh, around midday as well if that was to break, you know, the way gold can move and especially that volume starting to maybe come back in today from the bank holiday yesterday, I wouldn't argue out uh, a quicker move down to some of these support levels. However, because it's early morning, you're going to want a confirmation on that break. Don't, I wouldn't recommend going in too aggressive. Let's, you know, see 15 or even the 60 minute uh, time frame for that to be a support. But at the moment, holding firm levels above where we're trading, you can see we're getting squeezed in. We, we broke out of uh, the resistance or yesterday in the early hours 1564 and we come up to trade near some of these levels on the breakdown that we saw on the 8 1567 now and it's moved it up towards 1570 you've got a, a couple of lines in the sand one of those just happens to be diagonal with that trend line and the resistance there so I'd almost wait uh, and see what happens around uh, the trend obviously a false break is a good opportunity to get long again to target those highs uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that reacts. Having a look over at uh, oil yesterday, obviously, uh, coming this mor uh, come in yesterday morning and the spike, and we're saying don't get carried away about buying because the last two times oil was spiked, it's uh, you know, filled that very quickly and then continued lower. Let's just bring that into picture just to confirm that. September, you get that spike. Oh, look at that big, big move from the top of the spike on the, the futures down to where it found a bottom, 20%. Uh, and then obviously we had the, the gap higher quite recently on the, the Saudi, uh, on the Iran stuff. And yeah, I mean, that's still going from, from that spike. So just be careful when, uh, when oil gaps up, it's not a confirmation. It's going to continue to go and go and go. Couple good opportunities yesterday, actually, on the, on the trend line breaks. And the guys that I'm you know, working with in, in stage one of the course on the, getting in on that really nice uh, breakthroughs, the, the trends came back to retest in the afternoon and, and, and you can see that has continued to, to fall down to today. Horizontal support below where we're trading, you'd argue uh, obviously a couple of key levels near where we're trading. You see the low we found now is a quite key level on the 16th, it was found support on the 15th and before that the 13th as well so I definitely have that marked up. Above where we're trading well along with that trend line break you're going to have the low of yesterday in the early hours and then you've got the 17th and 16th, which are the highs back on there. So really key level, 58, 39 as well. So have those marked up as, as key levels of, in this case, resistance. This trend line 
you can see ooh, a bit of a fake out there and this is the advantage of obviously waiting for that close of the candle this is what i'd be looking to see in gold can we confirm that break lower and that would give me confirmation of wanting to go in early hours uh, lower volume trade here we're looking like we're actually going to close now above here and of course that could lead to a push higher quick look over at european equities uh, just finding a bit of support but we are down quite heavily 86 points this morning uh, understandably just finding a bit of uh, uh, relief following that uh, push lower and you've got some key levels below here the low double bottom from the 15th and 16th that if we are to have a further move to the downside this is where you really be, would be looking to to find some support anyway hope you all have a, a good trading day the calendar relatively light after we get through that 9 30 and 10 o'clock data release you can see yes the us are back in and uh, Trump is speaking this morning at, in, in Davos, in cold D Davos, so really you could argue that uh, the majority of the moves this, the, today are going to be done this morning, uh, but we'll have to wait and see uh, to, to see how the afternoon unfolds. But just be, be aware there's no speakers in the afternoon schedule, the data is thin, uh, and China obviously going on holiday the back end of the, the week as well. I uh, hope you all have a, a good trading day, and I'll catch you in the chat later on.